If you've gotten through the day today or yesterday without spending any money, you've won. You're ahead of the game. Here's the problem that we face as a society. Every day we're constantly being manipulated by companies that understand exactly what buttons to push to get us to buy stuff. Now, I am an ex-salesman. I mean, I came from the sales world. I've sold everything you can imagine from life insurance to pencils to jewelry, real estate. I've, I've spent a over 17 years in the real estate industry. And I understand what it takes to get people to buy. Now, you got to understand that the psychology of getting people to buy things is an amazing game. But the rules of those games are no longer just uh, allocated to the individuals who are professionals at it. Computers and the internet has made it extremely easy for anyone to get and push your buttons. Everyone knows now that you need at least seven times to be subjected to a particular ad before you actually buy it. Simply because the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth time, usually you can resist it. But at some point, by the seventh or ninth time, you're going to say, ah, you know what? You're going to start justifying in your head that you actually need it and you'll buy it. Yep, it's that simple. But, the, <laughs> but it's even, of course, it's much more complex than that. There's many more triggers that get you to buy. The point is, is that it's easy to manipulate you into buying things. You are constantly being sold. Thousands of ads are pumped at you every day and all it takes is for your mind to slip one little bit for you to conveniently be on the internet at that one point when an ad is pointed at you and you hit that button to say buy and put it on a credit card and you're, you're sold. Done. Finish. What does that do you know, to your pocketbook though? What does that do to your savings? What does that do for you? after you've gotten that high of receiving the product, enjoyed it for a week, and then all of a sudden, yeah, I don't really need it. So it just becomes allocated to a little pile where you keep all your junk, all your stuff. You gotta stay strong and you gotta understand how you're being manipulated in order to fight the urge. Now, I've started practicing something called minimalism. Minimalism is simply changing your mindset to realize that you don't need stuff, you just want stuff, and the stuff that you have accumulated is literally stifling you and choking you. And so when you go into your house and you've got to wade through the stuff that you've bought, it actually weighs you down, it holds you down, it, it, you don't realize it, but you just, you just don't feel free. So I started practicing this minimalism and literally just cleaning out anything that I have not used in six months or more. Clothes, everything. I mean, I had t-shirts that are 10 years old. I have underwear that are <laughs> just as old. But the point is I got rid of them because literally if I'm not wearing them or anything that I had a sentimental attachment to, but just taking up space, I got rid of it. Now my wife is an odd hand. She hasn't reached that point yet. So all the space that I actually give up, she just puts her stuff in. Yeah, I, I'm dealing with it. I am dealing with it, okay? I think I'm winning her over slightly, but her shoe collection, wow, outrageous. You ladies know exactly what I'm talking about. So point is, is that by changing this mindset and start thinking consciously, do I really need it? and then actually telling myself why I don't need it instead of trying to justify myself on why I need it, I realize that I start to buy less stuff.
only when I absolutely need something. But I don't start with, I need it. I start with, why do I need it? That's the question I ask first. If you try that, you will realize that you actually don't need a lot of stuff. So that's one way for, that I became happier, f freer, and it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. So I would actually encourage you guys to examine minimalism. Look it up. I'm going to include a few links below so you guys can actually go and see exactly what I'm talking about. It's easy to practice and it's so liberating. It's unbelievable. Second tip I want to give you guys today is talking about downsizing your home. Yes, I know we have adopted this westernized attitude. You know, if you travel to the to eastern areas, you realize people live in much smaller homes and are actually happy doing it. I mean, I remember the first time I went to Germany and I was staying at a hotel and the bloody thing was so small. Me and my friend were literally, we felt cramped. But the thing is, it was efficient. It had every single thing we need in there. But because the rooms weren't that big, now this was a while back, just a couple of decades back, but it was my first exposure to another culture that actually taught me something of value. And this is why I always encourage getting out of the Western Hemisphere. Because in the West, bigger homes mean that you are successful. Bigger homes means that, oh, I can put more stuff in there. But if you minimalize and you also downsize your home, you realize that you are actually paying less of a mortgage, thereby using those funds to enjoy a different lifestyle. In other words, it's much better to actually buy experiences than to buy stuff. Let me put it to you this way. Tell me one piece of stuff that you had that you spent enough money on that you could buy a vacation, a plane ticket to go and see somewhere else. Tell me what experience that gave you versus tell me one of those trips that you went on that you went to a different country and you experienced these, a, a host of other things. In other words, you remember the trip, you don't remember the stuff that you bought. I can almost guarantee you that. So forget the stuff, spend your money on experiences, save for the future. Things are not gonna get any easier. But back to the home. The point I'm trying to make is a study was conducted and, um, and they were asking people how much of your home you actually use. And the study concluded that most people don't use 30% of their house. Now think about this in critical terms and in numbers. Imagine having a 30% less mortgage, 30% less time to pay for a mortgage that you're paying for currently that is actually eating away at 30% more payment. See where I'm going? Can, can you visualize this? If you are holding that room, that special little room where you have your special china or your special chair for your guests that never really come over. I visited a house uh, when my, my daughter was on a sleepover. The woman had a massive house and she had a huge room I swear it was literally three times the size of my apartment that, um, that I used to live in. And it was all pure white furniture. And it was so clean. I could see no one has been in that room and I could see none of the five kids she has were allowed to go into that room. And I asked her, plain and straight, does anyone ever use this room? And she says, no. We just keep it here for guests, but uh, no one hardly comes over, so it just stays there. Literally, the room was, stuck, was just bland, just empty. I felt so uncomfortable sitting on the furniture because I felt like I was going to dirty the furniture. So, point is, is that they're paying for that room that isn't being used. They're paying for a portion of the house that is not being used. And if you think about that, that's ridiculous. Why would you do that? Why would you try to please someone else by having a huge house, right? And then paying for that other person's opinion 
of you because that's technically what you're doing. You're paying for their opinion. We're back to that one point I made in one of my videos before. FUPO, fear of other people's opinion. Fearing that if you don't have a big house, other people will judge you and think that you're poor or can't afford a big house and you feel that you know, you're not successful because you don't have a big house and all of a sudden you're paying for a big house just to please other people and then you're broke and you can't save and God forbid if you bought, if you actually lost a job or ended up in a position where you can't pay for it and then the bank has to take it. And in all of that time, you could have been paying 30% less on the house. Think about it in those terms and then you'll understand where I'm coming from. And what I'm recommended is start to look at downsizing your lifestyle to suit you, your lifestyle, not what somebody else want you to live like. That makes sense? Yeah, not somebody else's opinion of what you should be living like because you're technically paying for their opinion. Got it? Okay, that's my little rant for the day. That's, that's just things that just claws at me and bothers me about the way we live. And as thinking human beings, we need to get out of this, this, this way of thinking. So my friend, if you like what I'm saying, pop me a message below. If you want, if you have any other opinions, let me know, please. And subscribe, subscribe to my channel and let's talk. Cool. Cheers.